Today I'm working to freshen up some mock scrapes on our farm and also add some new mock scrapes. So in this video I want to talk about what my mock scrape strategy is for our farm and how you can apply it to your property. Alright so here's the main method or main tool for setting up mock scrapes out on our farm and this is grapevine in Minnesota it's called riverbank grape but that's what I use to get the mock scrapes going. I cut them in about four to five foot lengths look for that nice fresh growth probably half inch to an inch in diameter and yeah set it up where I want to get my mock scrapes going so to tie off the mock scrapes I'm using paracord you can see I'm almost out but that works really well to tie to the end of the vine and tie to my overhanging branch to get the scrapes going all right so here's one of the vines I got up today see I look for that nice overhanging branch I tied off my paracord up there and I got my it's probably a five footer hanging down and I set this right at belly button height now you can go just slightly lower in the summer because once the leaves fall off the tree it does raise up an inch or two so you can maybe even target waist level if you're hanging them in the summer just knowing it'll pop up a little bit but if you can keep it around that waist belly button level that works really well for getting or for the height that the deer like now this particular spot is a big old shooting lane that kicks out that direction to a food source. So I put this right in the center of the shooting lane because I want this to help stop the deer so that we can get a shot during rifle season. All right, so here's a travel corridor that works its way right by a bow stand. I wanna have a mock scrape within bow range bow range of all my bow stands if possible so here's my mock that I got set up right here I always try to kick off the duff right there and even spray it if I can just to get it started I didn't really do a good job of that yet but the biggest thing is having this thing right in the middle of the trail because as soon as that first fawn or doe or buck bumps it the scent station starts right at the end of that scrape or at the end of that vine and then every deer that goes by here is going to start checking it so you can see in the background of this one, there's the bow stand. It's nice too, I got the whole trunk kind of covering me up. So this is a perfect spot to catch them or to get them to stop to get that shot. And again, this vine is set up right on a main run. This is a tight skinny pinch right here that runs right up to this ridge, cuts this direction and then boom there's the spot we hopefully get our shot all right here's another mock vine mock scrape location you can see this trail is sprayed off good I keep this one open because this is again a main run right along this ridge and it's again a skinny pinch this is really the only place the deer can exit through this ridge to get from that cover over to that cover the reason that is is because I've hinged these trees I basically made a wall coming down here and I made a wall coming up here and then you can see there's no fence or anything left here so this is the spot they have to push through when they're running this this ridge right here so excellent excellent spot for a mock vine see right here this is the kind of the two main travel corridors that work through this part of the ridge I got one cutting that way one cut in that way that intersect right here and then kick out in front of the vine and there's my deer stand about 15 yards away set up in a perfect location ready for a shot about 30 yards away from that vine now nah, maybe 40 yards I got another vine just right on this travel corridor that I created I want the deer to use this corridor so I am fine with setting up multiple vines on it to really start to create that line of buck movement and create that scrape line. So here you can see I got a hinged ash tree right there and I got my vine right underneath and it's right in the middle of the deer trail again. I can't stress that enough. enough. You want the vines to be on the deer trail so that first deer hits it. If you put it off on either side there's a good chance they never find it and you don't get that scrape started. But again, it's bare dirt underneath. 
Got that fresh vine hanging right there. It's about waist level, belly button height. Ready to go to uh, create this whole line of movement on this ridge. You can see on the back side of this vine is just super, super thick cover. That was logged. I've done some TSI, I've done some hinge cuts. So super thick. So that's bedding over there. Then we got bedding off that direction. And I got the vine right in the middle. So just creating that line of movement. So I do hang these vines on the edge of food sources as well. We got a skinny strip of food that heads out to the main destination food. I seeded this in a clover alfalfa mix, the spring frost seeded. It is coming in phenomenal. And we've had great weather for it, so that's awesome. But here is the main mock vine right there. So I got the main travel corridor that kicks out right here. And then it's going to be tough to see. But there's a bow stand right. You can kind of see it right up there. So again, within bow range of the stand, that's about a 20 yard shot. I've shot some deer right through this lane. But if I am hanging them on food sources, I definitely want them within bow range of a stand. So one thing I should note is that these vines make for phenomenal trail cam locations. So if you're trying to do inventory on your property, these spots are great spots to capture that buck movement uh, on your property and see what bucks are hanging out there. So great location for trail cameras. So this vine right here probably gets the most activity on it of any vine on the farm, but it's because it's at a phenomenal intersection. You can see, I mean, that's all the deer right there. They have they make a scrape the size of a car hood under it every single fall. So what I have here is a few tra trails that converge. So I got one that comes through here. It's kind of an open spot in the conifers. It comes right up to the vine. You can see another one that kicks out this direction and it weaves its way off into a really, really good bedding cut over there. I got the four-wheeler parked on the third one, which comes right here. That heads out to the food. And there's actually the fourth inner, or fourth trail that comes in right here. Now this one again kind of weaves down and goes into some logging slash back that direction. So four good trails that all kind of meet right at the vine. So that makes that vine very attractive. And again, we got a stand right there. Now that one's not super high, but I love putting stands up next to big trees because the deer are generally right in front of me here. So when I see them, they're normally standing probably about right here. And it looks like you'd stand out. But leaning up against those big trees, I just, I honestly have never been picked off of this stand. I put my stands low because I want my dad to be able to hunt out of them. So that one maybe is 10 feet off the ground. Um, but I like to keep them low for that reason. But I just, because it's a big tree, I haven't been picked off in it. And we've had that stand up probably for seven or eight years now. So really, really good spot, especially during the rut. Here's a little view from the stand. The shadows are messing with me, but there's the vine. You can see I got a nice open look right here through the pines. My main bedding is off that direction. And then I got logging kind of back that way. But again, just a great intersection. All the activity is right in front here, so I can just blend right into the tree get my look. I mean, we're right on top of the deer here, but I just don't pick you off. All right, so here's the last one I'll show off for today. So this is a vine right in the middle of a beautiful bedding cut. I just refresh that one. I always put a camera over there facing the vine, and this is a great spot to see daylight buck activity during the rut. They hammer this vine, but they are in this bedding cut, because you can see it is insanely thick. One of the best cuts on the farm. I mean, we got great beds literally right off to the side here. There's beds all the way around this. Nice canopy right here. But this is an act this is a spot 
with lots of activity during the fall. Right now, it's it's thick in here, so this the deer aren't necessarily in here that much in the summer. They're seeking out those kind of more open, airy spots. But once they start rubbing that velvet off, they start to filter in here, the bucks and the does, and man, during mid-October to the end of November, the buck activity in here is amazing. Well, yeah, I like to sit, set vines in here in my bedding cuts just to give them a little extra incentive to hang out in here. And I do happen to have a stand right up there. So 20 yards from the vine, slipping off the field edge in here on an early, early morning hunt. I have to just cross a little bit of food, but most of the deer I haven't gotten bumped coming in here because I have a good access all the way up to the last like 20 yards. But in the morning, the deer are all out that direction on kind of their main destination food sources. So I just come in really early, sit right there, and this is a fun spot to sit during the rut, or it was a really fun spot to sit last year during the rut. Lots of activity. But there it is, vine right in the middle of the cut. All right, y'all take care. God bless.